Hello and welcome to St. Matthew Lutheran Church of Milwaukee. This is the service for the fifth Sunday of Easter, May 2nd, 2021. We begin with the old mission hymn from Greenland's Icy Mountains. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me. A sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your Oh Lord God 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first scripture lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning at verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Today's psalm serves as the text for our sermon, which has the theme, Stay Caught in This Gracious Circle. We sing Psalm 67. to us and bless us. And make his face shine upon us. May your ways be known on earth. Your salvation among all nations. 
May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then the land will yield its a harvest and God our God will bless us God will bless us and all the ends of the earth will fear him glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. The second reading is from St. John's first letter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know by the Spirit he gave us. This is the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Gospel is recorded by St. John in chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, 
and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the Gospel. Praise be to you, Christ. We join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day. Give thanks. 
planks and bring to Christ our Lord adoration. His honor speed my word and deed to every land, every And death set free All joy and full consolation Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance Through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior Amen Dear friends in Jesus, we have all heard of vicious circles. For example, someone might sleep very poorly one night and so the next day to make up for it they take a big nap, but then that night they sleep poorly again because of the big nap, so the next day they take another big nap and the next night sleep poorly and so on. Or someone might be stuck in poverty and they know that an education would help get them out of poverty but they don't have the money for the education because of their poverty and they're stuck in a vicious circle. Vicious circles are discouraging. But Psalm 67 tells us about an encouraging circle. It's not a vicious circle. It's a gracious circle, and God in his grace has caught us in it. So let us stay caught in this gracious circle with people-based concern and with its unreasonable returns. The gracious circle we are caught in, of course, starts with the grace of God himself. This psalm quotes what we call the Aaronic benediction, given by God to Aaron to bless God's people. This psalm starts with, may God be gracious to us and bless us. And what a picture of his grace is given as that blessing goes on and we hear, may God's face shine upon us. If the almighty God's face is shining brightly in love toward us, and it is, then we have it made. One of our hymns puts it this way, foes may hate and friends disown me, Show your face, Lord, and all is bright. In Jesus, and only in Jesus, God's face does shine on us. The angry scowl that was there as he looked at our sinful state is gone because Jesus has taken away the reason for his anger. His face now shines on us then as soon as God's grace is cycling and circling down to his people, in this psalm, those people have this immediate prayer, the prayer that his grace reaches other people. Make your ways known among the nations. This is too wonderful to keep to ourselves. As God says later in Scripture, it is too small of a thing for me only to redeem my chosen people, Israel. I will redeem others. I will seek out the Gentiles. And the psalm echoes that, saying to the Lord, May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Circulate your love to everyone else is that prayer. Their concern for all the peoples comes from God's concern for all the people. There is a less famous sign from the cross of Jesus that reminds us of God's love for all the people. The more famous sign is the one we hear, in, hear about in the Bible, the one that says, 
Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, often abbreviated with the four letters I-N-R-I, the Latin abbreviation for those words. But there is another sign, not mentioned in the Bible, but a sign that would have been there, and that sign sometimes shows up in Christian art and stained glass windows, and it also has four letters from a Latin saying. And those four letters are S-P-Q-R. They stand for the Senate and the people of Rome. Such a sign would have been affixed at a crucifixion to let it be known by whose authority this execution is taking place. A sign that said the people and the Senate of Rome is something we still hear to this day in our legal system. The people of the state of Wisconsin versus so-and-so for such and such crime. So was Jesus really being crucified because of the authority of the Senate and the people of Rome? We have the answer from Jesus himself, from his interrogation under Pontius Pilate. When Pilate told Jesus that he, Pilate, had power over his very life or his death, we know Jesus' response. He said, You have no power except that which is given to you from above. Jesus was not being put to death by the people of Rome. He was being put to death for the people of Rome and for all the people of all the earth. If Jesus were to address the people of Rome from the cross, he could have said something like this. It's not really that you are charging me with violating your laws. Rather, it's this. My Father is charging me with you violating all of his laws and a world of sinners breaking all of his commandments. In great love, Jesus sacrificed himself for all the people. Of the many mysteries involved in God's great plan of salvation, the greatest is this, that God was willing to pay so great a price to bring sinful people to himself for time and for eternity. He did this so, as the psalm said, all the ends of the earth will fear him. And all the ends of the earth do fear him wherever his word is heard and believed. This brings us to what are sometimes called God's two great command, but one is called the great command and one the great commission. The great command is love your neighbor as yourself. The great commission is go and preach the gospel to every creature. The greatest fulfillment of love your neighbor as yourself is fulfilling the great commission for that neighbor. Making sure that our neighbor gets to hear what we have heard, the good news of Jesus. There is a place for all kinds of other wonderful ways to show love to other people. But the greatest of these loves is keeping this gracious circle going of sharing God's grace after we have heard of it and believe it. Sharing the wealth of God's mercy. A very different wealth was in the news a couple weeks ago. The the wealth of Wall Street, it was in the news when the notorious swindler Bernie Madoff died in prison. He stole billions from people by promising them unreasonable returns on their investments. He told them it didn't matter if the market was doing quite well or if the market was doing very poorly, they could expect around 12% coming back to them every month. That was a very unreasonable promise on a rate of return 
the markets just don't work like that. It should have made people suspicious, but it didn't, and they lost their money. As unreasonable as Bernie Madoff's promises of his returns were, God's promise is actually even more unreasonable. Bernie said, give me your money and I'll keep producing 12% more for you. God says, give me your sins and I will continually give you forgiveness. All of this goes back to the cross where something happened which has been called the great exchange. The great exchange where God takes from us all our dirt and filth and perversions and addictions and problems and then returns to us Jesus' perfection, his holiness, his righteousness. By whose reckoning is such an exchange as that reasonable or, or fair or even possible? By no human reckoning. But human reckoning does not have the last word. God's word has the last word. And God says, he promises, that that is the kind of return we can expect. There is the gracious circle of sinners going to God for the riches of forgiveness and God showering it on them. We all know that our nation has lately been spending enormous amounts of money and some have asked, isn't the money going to run out sometime? Perhaps it will, perhaps it won't, I don't know. But we do know that God's treasure house of forgiveness is not exhausted by our sins. When we seek to share the wealth of God's forgiveness, we don't have to fear running out of his mercy, not for ourselves and, and not for others. We don't have to say to anyone, sorry, God does not have the forgiveness to pay for that. No, God keeps showering it down on us as he keeps sending us his gracious word. Isaiah makes the comparison of the circle or cycle of rainfall as God keeps sending his word to the earth. Isaiah says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Bernie Madoff's victims failed to realize that their wealth really wasn't there. Sure, each month they got a nice printout from him that told them that it was there, and better than that, it was even growing all the time. But it was not really there. Don't we have the opposite problem with the unreasonable returns that God gives us in Jesus? We fail to realize how much is there. We fail to appreciate the greatness of his mercy. We fail to live in the joy of being part of this great harvest of souls. Someone has said we have enough faith to know that we should not be enjoying sin, but not enough faith to really be enjoying forgiveness, to really relax and rejoice in what God has done for us in Jesus. That is what we are made for, what God has made us for, to enjoy and to embrace and to share his forgiveness. You know, this Psalm 67 isn't one of the better known psalms. It's perhaps not said or sung that much, but in another way, we are saying it and singing it all the time because we do quite regularly pray the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, we say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's what this psalm is doing. Praying 
that God's will of his word going out into all the world is done. Praying that his kingdom keeps growing as more hearts find the grace of their Savior ruling in them. Our prayer continues to be that this gracious circle we are caught in keeps widening all the time. Amen. And the peace of God which goes beyond our understanding will keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your Jesus, our risen and ever-living Savior, we praise you with our whole being, for you have done wonderful things for us. At the cross we find full forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. There you suffered and died in our place. At the empty tomb we find full comfort, joy, and hope. Your resurrection proves that you are God's Son whose sacrifice has been accepted. Precious Redeemer, through the Spirit, fill us with a desire to feed spiritually on you, the true bread of life. Make your word through which you come to us sweeter than honey to our taste, and let it nourish our faith. Make yourself known as the bread of life to the spiritually starving peoples of the world as you cause the gospel to be preached to them through us. Oh, that the whole world would learn to praise your name by accepting your salvation and by trusting you for every good and needful blessing. To the glory of your saving name we ask these things, and in your name we join in praying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We join in the closing hymn. you should love as 
I have shown that I love you. No greater love can any have than that one die to save his friends. You are my friends if you what I command that you should do. I call you now, no longer slaves, no slave knows all the master does. I call you friends for all I hear my father say you hear from me you chose not me but I chose you that you should go and bear much fruit I chose you that you in me should bear much fruit that will abide. All that you ask, my Father dear, for my name's sake you will receive. This is my should dwell in each in all. It was a privilege and joy to worship with you again. We invite you to come also in person to our church at 8444 West Melvina. Each Sunday at 9 a.m. there is a worship service and also each Monday at 6.30, a repeat of Sunday morning. Very soon it is the festival of the ascension of our Lord and we are privileged to be hosting a service here at St. Matthew. That will be 6.30 on Thursday, May 13th. We have plenty of space to accommodate those who wish to come. God be with you till we meet again.